Hi, this is Mother Mantis. I'm back with another Mass Effect video. Today I'd like to talk to you about Mass Effect 4 and how do you solve the problem of Shepard? How do you move past Shepard? Now, I know I've done other videos in which I said that I felt that Shepard should not be the playable character in Mass Effect 4, and I think I still land there in terms of my opinion, but I want to talk a little bit today about what I think is Bioware's challenge or predicament with moving the series forward with and without Shepard. I'm going to put a link below to the other videos I have done on this topic and you can check those out as well. And while you're at it, why don't you check out the option of joining my channel. There's a little intro video which I would be very appreciative if you would at least just check out. So let's talk about how does Mass Effect 4 move past the problem of Shepard. Now I've got bullet points for this, so don't mind me. I'm going to be checking my bullet points as I'm talking because I've got a few things I want to say. So in order to continue the story of Mass Effect in the Milky Way galaxy after the drastically different options you have for Mass Effect 3 endings, certain events have to be made canon in order to give Mass Effect 4 a launching point. The trailer does imply that Shepard could be returning as the protagonist in Mass Effect 4, but that does raise some questions about how Bioware is going to implement that. I want to look forward to Mass Effect 4, but first, for just a minute, let's look back at Mass Effect 3. At the very end, Commander Shepard faces the Catalyst, who is the creator of the Reapers. The Catalyst offers three options for activating the Crucible, which, as you no doubt know by now, is the super weapon that's designed to stop the Reapers. So, assuming you have enough military power and can make any choice you want, the three choices are as follows. There's the Destroy, in which the Reapers and all synthetic life in the galaxy is destroyed, including supposedly Edie and the Geth. Uh, there's Control, in which you control the Reapers by downloading Shepard's consciousness as an AI into the Reaper consciousness, and Shepard ceases to live any kind of physical life. And there's Synthesis, in which uh, all organic and synthetic life is sort of combined with each other physiologically right down to a molecular level, resulting in sort of a galaxy-wide synthesis and balance between all organic and synthetic races though everyone is irrevocably and physiologically altered and connected to one another, and again, Shepard ceases to exist in any kind of physical way. And it sounds like Bioware has gone with Destroy as the canon ending because it's the only ending in which Shepard still maintains any kind of survival in a state that we would recognize her. The Destroy ending also sees the Mass Effect relays destroyed, and the trailer for Mass Effect 4 shows those Mass Effect relays being rebuilt. So. In the trailer, a figure, which, which turns out to be Liara, uh, climbs up a snowy hill with a dead reaper in the background, which pretty much confirms that the game takes place in the Milky Way galaxy. Liara picks up a piece of N7 armor, which pretty much has to be Shepard's, though Liara does appear to be older, so maybe it's hundreds of years later, who knows? Maybe she's the only surviving companion at that point, I don't know. At any rate, it brings up the question of what or who could possibly be the antagonist in Mass Effect 4. I mean, Commander Shepard's story throughout the entire trilogy deals with the fate of all life in the Milky Way galaxy. And the Reapers, as villains, are about as evil as, a, as an antagonist can be. I mean, they harvest all life in a galaxy on a cycle every 50,000 years, going back more cycles than anybody can remember. Normally the stakes in a story increase in level all throughout the trilogy and at the end of the story arc everything is resolved. In the Mass Effect world, in Mass Effect 1, the Reapers start out as a mystery and every game ramps up the threat until in Mass Effect 3 it's a full-blown galaxy-ending invasion. So how does Mass Effect 4 top that? Creating an even greater threat in Mass Effect 4 is almost impossible. So Bioware is in a little bit of a predicament, in my opinion, as to how they're going to continue this story. There's really no information on exactly when the sequel will take place, but clearly it's within Liara's lifetime. So the story will pretty much have to be dealing with the post-Reaper world in terms of the politics and the rebuilding and reconnecting of societies with each other. So the real question is whether Shepard is going to be a playable character. 
and I think there are problems story-wise uh, moving the series forward with Shepard, and I also think there are problems story-wise in moving the series forward without Shepard. And here's the rub as I see it. Almost from the moment we meet Shepard, her mission is focused on stopping the Reapers. In Mass Effect, she's primarily focused on Saren. Mass Effect 2 focuses on stopping the Reapers from harvesting all the galaxy races and building another Reaper right inside the Milky Way galaxy. And Mass Effect 3 is the culmination of the trilogy in which Commander Shepard makes decisions that deal with the fate of the whole galaxy. And even though you do a lot of other things throughout the story, the primary goal remains the same. Commander Shepard's mission is to stop the Reapers. That's the story arc. And everything contributes to this narrative. Shepard is a hero, no question. But the threat from the Reapers is so unimaginably large that it really should have transcended one single person, no matter how exceptional that person is. From a narrative perspective, at some point, the notion of Shepard alone solving cosmic galaxy-wide threats becomes a little bit absurd. Mass Effect 3 had to balance Shepard's personal heroic tale against a threat that had destroyed countless civilizations. Shep's choices literally affect the whole galaxy. And that's the problem. Everything about this trilogy hinges on Shepard. The ending was always going to boil down to some version of Commander Shepard defeats the Reavers. So what could possibly happen next? The galaxy would spend many years rebuilding does a new game continue to hinge on only Shepard's being able to save the day? At what point does it begin to feel a little bit silly that only one human being in all of the galaxy can prevail against a threat? Mass Effect 3 already kind of pushed that envelope pretty far. So do they intro a new protagonist? And if so, how do they make that significant after the single largest threat in the galaxy has been eradicated? How does it not feel like that new hero is simply cleaning up after Shepard? The biggest victory possible has already been achieved. So how does the next story not feel less significant? I've got some thoughts about this and I'm going to talk about those in my next video. But in the meantime, I would really like to hear your input. Putting aside your emotional connection to Shepard, do you think Shepard can really come back in Mass Effect 4 without making the only one hero can save us premise start to feel a little bit silly. And what do you think could possibly top the Reapers as a threat? What say you? Let me know in the comments and in the meantime, thanks and enjoy your day. Cheers.